So you've decided you want to buy a few raw music cards, and you want to make sure the cards you buy are in great collectible condition. The trouble is you're fairly new to music cards and stickers, and you really don't know the difference between great condition and not so great condition. Sound familiar? Well, we're going to fix all that right now. I didn't even know this was a thing. Hey everyone, my name is Reed and I want to welcome you to Collecting Music Cards right here on the Cardboard Portfolio channel. Today we're going to talk about how to inspect music cards to determine their condition. I'm going to lay out the basics for you so with this information you can confidently inspect the condition of the cards you'd like to buy before you buy them. You know, when investing in real estate, we know the three most important things to consider are location, location, and location. Well, when investing in music cards, the three most important things are condition, condition, and condition. There are four basic criteria to inspecting a music card. Each one is as important as the other, but let me take them in the order of how I usually approach them. Number one is centering. Centering simply means that the left margin of the card is equal to the right margin of the card. The top margin of the card is equal to the bottom margin of the card, and this goes for not only the front of the card, but the back of the card as well. The second criteria is corners. Your corners should be sharp, razor sharp. There should be no signs of wear whatsoever on the corners. If there is, that means you have a less than perfect card. Number three is edges. Your edges should be sharp and there should be no signs of wear, chipping, or dirt on the edges of your card. The fourth criteria for inspecting your card is the surface. The surface should be free of all defects. There should be no scratches. There should be no delamination. There should be no creases. There should be no indentations and there should be no fading. All of these things will decrease the value of the card. I'm going to go through two settings that you might find yourself in while trying to buy music cards. The first one is an in-person purchase, and the second one will be purchasing cards online. You're going to end up doing both these sooner or later, so let's start figuring this all out right now. I'm going to start off with the in-person purchase. If you're buying cards in person, chances are you found your way into a card shop or a card show. In my opinion, this is the setting that has the best potential for success. In this scenario, you have raw, ungraded cards that you can pick up and inspect, taking as much time as you need to complete the task. Do you need any tools to inspect cards? Not necessarily, but since my eyesight isn't exactly perfect, I personally use two tools when hunting for cards in the wild. Number one is a 10x magnification lighted jeweler's loop and the other is my cell phone with internet access. Let's take a look at the first tool I count on. This is a 10X magnification lighted jeweler's loop that I picked up on Amazon for about 30 bucks. I don't have the best eyesight, so this is an absolute necessary tool for me to be able to see up close when I'm inspecting the edges and corners of a card. The minute I start getting serious about a card, out comes the loop. It usually takes me about 20 or 30 seconds to inspect the corners and the edges of a card both front and back. It may take a little longer if you start seeing problem area and if you're trying to figure out exactly what's going on there. Sometimes there's just, there just might be dirt on the card and that can easily be cleaned off. But often there can be permanent damage as well. The loop gives me a close-up view so I can determine if the card has a serious problem or a potentially fixable minor issue. The second tool I rely on is my cell phone. I never know what I'll need to reference while inspecting cards, but there isn't a more valuable tool in a card show or a card shop than my cell phone. If you've been to any kind of a card show lately, you'll know that half the people there are looking at cards and the other half are looking up cards on their phones. Okay, so let's go through a handful of these cards and we'll touch on each of the four criteria, the centering, corners, edges and surface as we go through each of these cards. I'll go from start to finish on each card before I go to the next card. And I just picked some cards at random. I've got about 75 or 80 cards in front of me here right now. I just picked a few old ones. Well, there's nothing really modern here. 
the newest thing in here from the, is from the uh, 90s and 80s. So let's take a peek here. Let's start with this Jimi Hendrix card. This is, I'm going to pull this out. And as you can see, this card, as far as centering goes, it's heavy on the right-hand side. And what I mean by that is the right-hand side is thicker than the left side. And let me take this off in case there's a, f a reflection there. So I'm going to be real careful. But that's what you see right there. The one side is thicker than the other side. That means that this card is off-center. Now, in regard to the top or bottom, since the top and the bottom are different, we don't know whether or not those are off-center. The only way to really tell if that is off-center is if we could go online, and that, hey, this is more, much easier with a modern card. You're not going to find a lot of these Jimi Hendrix cards in PSA 10s, for instance. But if you could ever go online and you don't know what a card is supposed to be margin-wise on the top or the bottom because it's odd like this, what you can do is you can try to find a PSA 10 or let's say a Beckett 9.5 and look at the card that they have in that holder. If it's a 10 or a 9.5 through Beckett and you can compare it, what the margins are in that card to the card you have right here. And you can, if they're close, maybe you're on track. But anyway, so this card right here, the way it's going to grade out, is basically this one is heavy on the right-hand side versus the uh, left-hand side. If we look at the back, we can see that the back left to right is pretty well centered. So this is a, the centering on this card is not atrocious, but it's not perfect by any means. Secondly, we're going to look at corners. I can already tell you, I can see that with the naked eye, these corners are not that great. I bought this card because it's a rare card. And I'm going to buy a card like this, even if it's not in perfect condition, because it's rare and desirable. All four corners have issues. Now, I'm going to try to show you through my lighted loop exactly what this looks like and I might be able to show this camera right here what that is. Let's take a peek looking through the loop and you can see the corner has an issue. There's whiting on the corner. Let's go to the other one now. Uh, let me line this up. You can see how bad that is right there. Everything looks terrible through this loop and that's a, that's a good thing. It points out the flaws to you so, you so you know what you're working with. But anyway, that's what this is good for when we're, sh when we're shopping out in the wild. So, I've got four corners that are a little bit soft on this card. I've got uh, centering that isn't exactly perfect but not atrocious. Uh, what's next? The edges. So, I'll take this and I'll inspect the edges all the way around. And actually, the edges on this card are pretty nice. Uh, there's a chip on the right-hand side. And what do I mean by a chip? Well, let's see if I can show this to you. I know if I show it in the camera, the other camera, it might not show up. But if you can see that, there's a chip. Right? I'm going to move the card up and down so you can see the chip moving. There's a chip right there. So... That's a little bit of a problem right there. Not a big deal. I mean, there's a, there's a lot worse out there. But the bottom edge of this card is really nice. And a little chipping on the left-hand side as well. So this card has seen a little bit of action. And then let's look at, uh, last but not least, let's find on the surface. Uh, we'll take a peek on this surface. And let me see, I can see already, just with the naked eye, that right in this area under his chin, remember under his chin, that's where I got a little bit of a, uh, that's where I got a little bit of a problem there. So let me see if I can make this happen. If you can see any kind of issue under his chin there. I don't know if you can see that or not. 
but that's what I'm seeing as far as surface. On the back, I'm not going to get much of a reflection because this is a paper card. Yeah, I'm not going to get any kind of reflection at all. So basically on the back, what a lot of times what we're looking for, since this is raw cardboard on the back with no coating whatsoever, what we're typically looking for is any kind of mold or dirt or foxing, anything like that, that to where it's oxidized or deteriorated with age. Very common on, uh, on vintage cards. So we've inspected this card. We've kind of torn it down. Uh, it's not necessarily a terrible card. I'm still very proud to have this card because of the rarity of it. But I would say that if I sent this into PSA, more than likely because of the uh, centering, which isn't terrible, uh, the, the corners, a eh, little bit, you know, due to the uh, fact that the uh, edges are chipped a little bit and all that, I would be lucky to get, I would say I would be lucky to get a five on this card. And, but I would love to have this card in a five. I've got a couple of these and I don't have a five yet. So I'm going to send this one in basically only on the factor that this card is a rare card. So let me send that in. Let me put this away real quick so that I don't have any more issues with it. Okay, the second card we're going to look at is this card right here. This is a, a Doors card. And, uh, yeah, this is a, a, a Panini Cantanti Bisvalita. And, uh... Trying to, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think I had any issues on the back of this card. So let's take this from the get from the start. Let's go with centering first of all. So we're obviously going to find that this card is not going to be an easy card to uh, determine whether or not it's centered. Um, you can try to compare it to others. You can go online and often you can find one or two or three of these on maybe COMC or or eBay or maybe elsewhere. And what you can do is if you look, there's ways to determine left and right. If you look at his shoulder right on the, uh, what is that, the right side of the card, there's just a little bit of the background there. And you can compare that with other cards. You can see that there's much more background on the other side of this card. But maybe this is how it's supposed to be. So you don't know whether or not this is, you know, a card that's off center or not. You can only compare it with others. Uh, so that's centering. We don't know. The back of the card is actually not centered too badly at all. That's what that looks like right there. So the back of the card is not centered too bad at all. Let's look at corners. I'm just going to take a quick peek. That top left corner has real issues. And the two bottom corners are not bad. There's also a little bit of a crease in this card. I have to get to that in a minute. So yeah, this is kind of a rough card. This is not a card that will be sent in for grading. Um, it has a wave in it as well here. But and also, so this has real surface issues on this card. But let's take it one at a time. Centering and then corners. There's a bad corner right in the, I don't know if we can see this or not. Let's go. You can see how bad that corner is right there. I don't know if this is focusing or not. Let me try to focus there. So you can see that that's got a real issue on that corner there. With that, uh, Centering, corners aren't perfect, uh, edges are a little bit rough. This card has real surface issues. That's where this one really loses it. There's a wave in the card right going up and down right here. There's a pen mark right here on the card. You can probably see that. Right on the edge over here, there's a pen mark. And it's like someone was scribbling on the card. So this is a really rough card. Nonetheless... I bought it because it's a Doors card. And these cards are not out there just everywhere. And really nice ones cost a lot of money. And I needed, and I wanted to have this card. So there we are. So as far as surface, uh, I, need, I need to go really no further with this card. 
this card is definitely not going to be sent in for grading. This one just goes into the collection. This is one of those cards that I would consider not one of my favorites. I love the card itself as far as what it is, a Doors card. But as far as condition, I would be ready to trade out of this anytime, try to get into another one. Uh, so let's put that aside. Here we got a Jimi Hendrix, uh, 1973 VIP OK. Uh, let's take a look at this one. First, we're going to start with centering. And let's give you a good look at it. There's our card right there. Not bad centering. So if I were to look at this card left to right, I would say that this is about a 55-45. 55% of the uh, white borders over here, about 45 over there. Might be a little bit worse than that. It might be 57-43, but it's right around there. Top and bottom are, 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 are good. Yeah, I, I would say top and bottom are good. Let's take a quick peek at the corners. On the front, it has four very sharp corners. And on the back, we have very four very sharp corners. Uh, as far as centering, uh, I should have gone over this before. Centering on the back of the card, centering is really way off. But that can happen with these. This isn't the first one of these cards I've had like that. I've had a couple like that to where the centering is way off on these. That can happen. So, centering. The corners are really good on the card. What about the edges? Edges. The edges on this card are really nice. So far, the only issue we have with this card is the uh, is the centering on the back. And then as far as getting a glimpse at the gloss, and let's see if I can get a... Let me get in the camera. Let's see if I can show that off to you. So, let me get an eyeball of this myself. I see a little bit of something going on up here, almost like a dimple right here, a little bit. And up here, it looks like there's a little bit to where at one time the corner might have been folded over about a little bit into the yellow there, but not quite. I mean, there's no crease or anything like that. It just looks like a little bit of a wave. It could have been, you know, even when they packaged the card, when it was brand new, that could have been there. So this card right here, definitely a card that I would send in for grading. I think that this card would have a chance of being a solid six, which is typically the grade I get on one of these. And I would have a chance at maybe, because the, the corners and the edges are so nice, the, the uh, color is really nice, I think I might have a chance at a 7 on this card. But I'm, I'm thinking it's more of a 6. So that's where we are there. This Jerry Garcia card. I love these. There's not a lot of cards of Jerry Garcia out there. So that's why I'm so attached to these uh, Brockham's Rock cards in the Legacy series. This particular card, if you look at the centering, um, I can tell you right now, this is a really nicely centered card. That border is a dead giveaway, too. So that's a nicely centered card. Let me take this out and show it to the camera. There we go. There's Jerry. And really nicely centered on the front. Decent centering on the back. A little bit thicker on the left than the right. I hope you can see that. 
Just slightly thicker on the left than the right. No big deal. Nothing that's going to hold this card up from getting a good grade. But I'll tell you, the next category is what will hold this card up from getting a great grade. And that's the fact that when these Brockham Rock Cards Lazy Series with the gold edges, when these things get chipped or just even scuffed a little bit, that white pops out like a sore thumb. And this top left corner here, you might be able to see this even. Top left corner. A little bit of white there. You should be able to see that. And let's try it this way. Top left corner. Uh, let's go here. Can you see that white? Yeah. So that's going to hold this card up from being, you know, a very strong grade. It can hold it down just that corner alone. Uh, let me see if everything else clears out. The edges, I believe, on this were pretty good. Yeah, the edges are real nice. Let me check the back edges. Yeah, the edges are real nice on the card. And then as far as surface, yeah, the surface is real nice on this. So there's no there's no issues with the surface on this card. So this is a card that uh, our, our biggest issue with this card is the top left corner. Um, and I think that would hold it back from being a 10. It would hold it back possibly from being a 9. I would say that if I had to guess, this card's going to be an 8. And uh, because it's, it's nice other than that. So that's probably going to be an 8. One of the things you want to consider is take this into account. This card, this Jerry uh, Garcia card, is what is it? It's a $15 or $20 card. That's what people sell these for. Um, if it's in a 10, the card's worth a lot of money. It's worth hundreds of dollars if it's a 10. If it's a 9, it's probably worth about 60 bucks. If it's worth, if it's an eight, now you're probably talking about trying to get your money out of it and getting your grading fee out of it and breaking even. So this is probably not a card that you would send in. This is a card that you hold on to. You might trade it off. You might try to upgrade to another one. But I have tons of these Jerry Garcias because I, I there's certain things that I keep on going after, trying to get good grades on them. Um, I have tons of these. So yeah, one day I'll trade this off to someone that, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be well aware of the corner on there, but they won't, you know, they just won't give me a ton of value for it. Next card, Jimi Hendrix. This Jimmy right here, this is really a cool card. C Cantanti, it is a recovery card. And I'll go through that in just a second. Let's give you a peek at the front first. This card is in pretty nice shape. There's Jimmy. And you can see that this card has decent centering, right, left, top, and bottom. Very acceptable centering. Not exactly 50-50 all the way around, but very, very nice centering. So that's there. Corners. Let's take a quick peek here. Yeah, these are really crispy corners. Those are nice corners. So centering-wise, we've got an acceptable card. Corners. Got a real nice card. What about edges? Edges. Edges are good. There's no chipping, no issues, no dings, no folds, nothing like that. Now, let's get to surface on this card. Surface is the issue. Not so much on the front. I'll show you this real quick. On the front, we've got a pretty decent card. A pretty 
pretty decent card on the front. But what do we have on the back here? This is a recovery card. This is a card that was designed to be pasted into an album years ago. They call it a sticker. It's actually a card, but they call this a sticker um, because you stuck it into an album that was designed for this uh, for this series. When a recovery card is when someone actually takes an album, tears the cards back out, and sells them. And that's what this one is here. You can see on this card, there's no part of the card is missing. So it's a complete card, but it has excess glue on it and paper from the album that it, it, it was mounted in. So it has some excess material on it. There's nothing missing from this card, but it does have excess material on it. Nonetheless, when I send this in for grading, more than likely, if this card right here did not have that recovery issue on the back, you're probably looking at a nice PSA 7 or PSA 8 on this card. It's really nice. But with this back here, we're probably looking at, on a, on a good day, this is going to be a 3. Probably it's going to turn out to be a 2, and it might only be a 1. But I got a feeling that they're going to give me a 3 on this if I send it in. Nonetheless, this is a rare Jimi Hendrix card. I'm sending it in, and I'm getting my 3 if I can. So that's where we are on that one. Next one we're going to take a look at is an ACDC card. Not a real old card. But what is this? 1985 from uh, Panini Smash Hits. This is a sticker. And this is an actual sticker. This is a, a sticker that you can peel off and stick. And let's uh, take this out. I have this in a sleeve. It's really tightly in that sleeve. But let's take it out so we can do a good inspection. Okay, first thing we're going to look at is centering. This card has really, really nice centering. I'm calling it a card because stickers can be called cards too. Look at that centering. That's pretty good. Left, right, top, bottom. Very acceptable. So, as far as centering, we're in good shape here. I would say that this is 50-50 left, right. 50-50 top and bottom. No, bottom is more like 55-45. 55, 45. 55 on the bottom, 45% on the top. Uh, let's see. Besides that, let's check out the edges real quick. Well, let's check the corners first. And the corners are not perfect. I have a little bit of a... It, it may look sharp with the naked eye, but that corner right there is not perfect up top there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That is definitely not a perfect corner. So, with that, it's still a decent card. And there is some dirt. And now this dirt might be able to be cleaned off. I got to show you what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. On the card there, there is actually dirt. Here's a good example, too. You can see inside of my magnifier, you can see the grid that's in there so that I can measure things with it. You can see the grid as we're trying to look for the dirt. And so there we got that. So, yeah, we've got a little bit of a, a corner issue. Um, we've got a little bit of dirt on there that I might be able to clean that off, and I might be able to completely clean it off successfully. Uh, we're not going to go through that today. Uh, edges. Let's take a peek. Edges are fine. And then as far as surface, let's take a peek here. Let's get a peek at the surface. 
we'll use that light over there. Not bad. I'm not really seeing any real surface issues. So, yeah, the, the fate of this card is the fact of whether or not I can get that dirt off and the fact that these corners will never be perfect. If I were to send this in for grading the way this sits right now, it would probably get a 5. If I can get the dirt off, it may get a 6. Remember, these corners look sharp to the naked eye. With the magnifier, I can see all kinds of problems with that. Anyway, that's all the cards I'm going to go through right now. I'm going to leave this uh, Black Sabbath card for another time. And that is how I actually go through the cards. So there we are. I want to thank you for watching this video today. I hope you enjoy watching all of the Collecting Music Cards videos as they're posted. If you think you may want to learn more about music cards and tips for collecting them, and if you're looking forward to more videos in this series, take a second to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell as well if you want notifications that a new video has posted. If you'd like to take a peek at some of my personal music card collection online, you can find it on my website at www.cardboardportfolio.com. And if you're excited about being part or becoming part of the music card collecting community, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to see what you have to say, and I'm sure others would too. Until next time, thanks for stopping by.